Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Jared Vasquez, your favorite ringside physician. Last night, we were blessed by the fight gods with two amazing fight cards, one in the MMA side, Paul Felder versus Dang the Hangman Hooker. That card did not disappoint. It was full of exciting and amazing uh, fights, and the boxing gods were blessing us as well with the rematch everybody had been waiting for in the heavyweight division, and that is Tyson Fury and his rematch with Deontay Wilder. That fight did not disappoint. Uh, everybody, a lot of pundits had um, uh, Deontay Wilder uh, on the pre-fight build-up, you know, winning by knockout because of his rematch with uh, Ortiz, uh, where he knocked out Ortiz. So everybody thought that he did really well in rematches. But uh, Tyson Fury's dad, uh, he knew some he knew something that we didn't. Uh, uh, perhaps he. He saw his his son on the fight camp, and and he knew that something special was going on uh, with his new trainer. So uh, he knew uh, he was going to have a knockout. So let's let's check out this short clip of uh, Tyson Fury's dad making you know making a bet because he knew his son was going to win by knockout. Let's just check out that short clip. So all them you put all them statistics into one pot. What do you come out with? A man when he's pressured and he's in a hard time, he'll crack at the seams, and once he cracks. Crackle spread for me to Manchester and back, and it's over. I don't reckon. All right, so Deontay Wilder was knocked out in the later rounds, but there's something important that occurred in round number three. The true knockout or the blow that led to the knockout happened in round three, and it was a massive uh, overhand to one of uh, Deontay Wilder's ear that caused some bleeding. And now, Let's talk about the true diagnosis of what happened here. Let's nerd out a little bit. So what happened here, the bleeding was coming from a ruptured tympanic membrane, or in layman's terms, a ruptured eardrum. Now, why would that affect uh, the outcome of the fight? Just because of the bleeding, why would that affect uh, the outcome of the fight? Is there something going on in the brain or is something elsewhere? Uh, going on so let's let's dig a little deeper on the causes of a ruptured eardrum so traumatic causes of tympanic membrane perforation would include inserting objects into the ear canal purposely guys putting a q-tip in there and accidentally tearing it and breaking it or in this case concussion caused by a blow which would be categorized as a bar of trauma so a trauma secondary to the pressure uh, and also another another way that tympanic membrane is ruptured is sometimes a doctor is checking it out too vigorously and you can break the tympanic membrane what symptoms would we have of course extreme pain when that uh, tympanic membrane is ruptured so what symptoms would we feel uh, traumatic perforation of the tympanic membrane causes sudden and severe pain sometimes followed by bleeding from the ear like in uh, tyson's fury and Ta deontay wilder's case hearing loss and tinnitus tinnitus is nothing more than uh, hearing a buzzing uh, sound in your ear so imagine that you're fighting tyson fury you have vertigo you have tinnitus as vertigo you have your, your your balance is not quite there and you have a buzzing sound in your ear it is definitely not a good time and we mentioned vertigo why would he have vertigo if he just ruptured the eardrum well this is what happens guys the anatomy of the inner ear is linked so you have the eardrum you have the ossicle chain which is a chain of little tiny bones that transmit the sounds that are being uh, received by the tympanic membrane associated to that is the vestibular canal so it's a it's a array of uh, semicircular canals filled with fluid and sensors it almost works let's pull up a picture of a gyroscope uh, a gyroscope uh, is a man-made uh, a man-made machine that uh, helps you know electronics with balance just like your uh, xbox controller or your playstation controller can detect uh, its motion uh, in your hands um, a gyroscope uh, in our e inner ear helps us with balance conjugated with eyesight uh, so the moment that you have such a severe trauma let's pull up a picture of the semicircular canal so you guys know exactly uh, the vestibular system so you guys know exactly what i'm talking about so these three loops in there you see that they're all arranged in different uh, anatomical planes uh, this helps us with balance if you jar that massively with a tyson fury uh, punch you're gonna have disruption of the anatomical integrity of the structure and you're gonna have vertigo the two signals that help you achieve balance eyesight 
and this, the the signal from the inner ear. The moment one of those is not conjugated, everything is spinning. So it's two two inputs that it, that are coming into your brain, telling you the spatial information of how you associate it to your environment, and that's gone. By the way, you're fighting the Gypsy King. What that? Not a good time. Not a good time. So that's the moment that Tyson Fury won that fight. Now, how would you diagnose this? Initially, he's going to be taken to the hospital. Of course, that CT scan and an MRI will be done. But the most important part, uh, the diagnosis of the broken eardrum is the first step. The broken eardrum, so the tympanic membrane. And that is done with a simple otoscope. So it's an instrument that doctors like me use to check out the integrity of the ear. You put a little cone, a little disposable cone on the tip. You'll go in and this is the image that you will see when you see that ruptured eardrum of course he had vertigo of course the balance was the problem so deeper studies have to be done and those are imaging uh, studies there could be surgery there could be surgery as part of his treatment if that ossicle chain those little bones that transmit the sound from the tympanic membrane to the inner ear are disrupted are broken so there might be corrective surgery needed if that ossicle chain has been touched or has been harmed in any shape way or form uh, so it looks like a recovery of maybe four to six weeks uh, for Deontay Wilder but he's gonna be out of the ring and out of practice for a little bit of a longer time because this is uh, this is an injury that is in a, in a system uh, so small and so intricate that you definitely want to give uh, your fighter rest. It was an amazing fight and we were waiting for it. It looks like we're going to have to wait for uh, for Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury 3, a longer time. Thank you guys for your support. There you have it. A ruptured eardrum was the cause of the bleeding, but the most important part or the most important factor uh, that won him the fight was the disruption of the structures that are deeper into the ear, the vestibular canal. That is what uh, gave Deontay Wilder all sorts of troubles and had him in uh, roller skates the rest of the night. Uh, thank you guys for your support. Remember to watch all the rest of my videos. They're amazing. And keep subscribing. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.